Hello everyone, it's Susan Gerbic from the Gorilla Skepticism of Wikipedia project. Lots of updates for you and one story. I've been honored with the 2017 JREF grant. That's the James Randi Educational Foundation. Their press release says that the award is given to the person or organization that best represents the spirit of the foundation by encouraging critical questions and seeking fact-based answers. With this in mind, a lot has been happening and more is still happening. I've done a lot of research and outreach, many lectures to lots of skeptic audiences across the world in the last year. I've been writing about some of these and I have more articles coming out to talk about a lot of the other places I've been to and a lot of the different things coming out. So see Skeptical Inquire online, csicop.com. Type in Susan Gerbic and you'll see lots of articles that you can read. My goal with all the outreach lectures that I do is number one, to find new people to join GSOW. Number two, assess the health of skeptical organizations around the world. Number three, find ways to bridge groups together and motivate more skeptics to do more things. And to do this better and more officially, I'm now a nonprofit. And that nonprofit is called About Time. Within that organization includes the GSOW project, the Monterey County Skeptics, and we're also using the money to help supplement travel for me to be able to go do more outreach so I can find more editors. <laughs> we're also doing various stings, mainly with psychics, and hopefully soon I'm going to be able to do some work with facilitated communication and rapid prompting method. And if you don't know what those are, you can find long, extensive, detailed articles on Wikipedia that the DSOW project has written for facilitated communication and rapid prompting method. We're not yet taking donations, but we will be doing so soon. We're on the final stages of getting the 501c official paperwork completely finished, um, checking account, PayPal account, Oh my gosh, there's so much paperwork involved in a nonprofit. It's amazing that anybody even tries to do it. But uh, we're almost done, so we will let people know if you'd like to help out um, by sponsoring us financially. We're also going to be doing um, conference uh, attendance uh, scholarships. And um, that's something I really, really have been wanting to do for a long time. And now we're going to be able to do that. In other news, my team of volunteers from all over the world, and they really are from all over the world. We just completed another psychic sting. We are still listening to the audio as it just happened and all will be revealed in early spring 2018. So look for Operation Peach Pit. We completed a very successful sting of a psychic in March 2017 called Operation Pizza Roll, where we did catch a grief vampire hot reading in fact, he even argued with me about what <laughs> what uh, he was reading on the Facebook page that I had no idea was on my Facebook page. So all will become known and the, both of the Operation Peach Pit and Operation Pizza Roll will be discussed in the same article that will be coming out in spring 2018. Um, so stay tuned. Follow me on Facebook is the easiest way to find out when these things happen. Everything and everybody who was involved in the stings will be free to talk about it after that the large article comes out. I want to tell you one story before I end this segment of skepticality. Something to illustrate the importance of some of the activism that I do teach. So in early January 2018, I was informed that Thomas Bopp had died. That's Bopp, B-O-P-P. -P. So who is Thomas Bopp? I can hear most of you listeners psychically telling me. And then I can also hear a whole bunch of you psychically screaming, I know who that is, duh. And so when I say Hell Bop Comet, most listeners probably actually took the time out to go look for it in the sky back in 1997. You know, now know who I'm talking about. I'm going to tell you the story behind the scenes of uh, Thomas Bop and the health of his Wikipedia page. Keep in mind, this is just one story out of many that the GSOW project has been involved in. GSOW has over 100 people, probably closer to 133 people in our group. Half of them are still in training 
and some are more active than others. Most are working in English, but not all. Training to be a GSOW editor typically takes months. Your last assignment is to rewrite an existing Wikipedia page. We specialize in biographies of people involved in science and scientific skepticism. That's just usually easier for the new people to, to rewrite. Once they're a lot further along and they've actually had a lot of training, then they're more able to tackle more difficult subjects, something that's a little more contentious and a little more controversial. So one of our editors, uh, Rob Palmer, he chose to rewrite the Wikipedia page for Alan Hale. And that's not the skipper on Gilligan's Island, Alan Hale, <laughs> but the first name in the Hell Bop Comet theme. So Rob did a fantastic job. He brought the Wikipedia page from eight citations to 35 citations. It's a very respectable read. So we had a discussion on the secret cabal. Yes, we do have a secret cabal located on Facebook. Anybody who joins the GSOW project uh, needs to have access to Facebook because we will put you into the secret cabal. So inside the cabal, we talked about Thomas Bopp's Wikipedia page, and it was pretty embarrassing. It's what we call a non-scroller. It's less than a stub. In other words, you don't even have to scroll with your mouse to see the entire page. It's all summed up in one little neat little bit. It was pretty embarrassing. It only had four citations and it just felt wrong. But he was an amateur astronomer and not a person that we thought gave a lot of lectures. We really didn't know much about him and we thought we were going to have a lot of trouble finding content to put on the Wikipedia page. But GSOW editor Ruth Nolan decided she was going to try to give it a go and she turned it from four citations to 29 citations. Previously, it had only been nine sentences long, and now it's about six paragraphs with a nice photo of the comet Hale Bopp and a couple of photos of Thomas Bopp himself. Now, I knew almost nothing of Thomas Bopp before we rewrote this Wikipedia page, and I spend very little time these days actually getting to edit Wikipedia, but I spend many hours a day reading Wikipedia drafts, training editors, motivating editors, writing articles for Skeptical Inquirer, doing podcasts, and just many, many things. But I do get to read a lot of different topics in Wikipedia pages in my normal day. So it turns out that Alan Hale and Thomas Bopp pretty much discovered the comment at the same time. But Bopp didn't have cell phone coverage in the Arizona desert. So he drove towards home and stopped at a payphone. Remember those? <laughs> but he found that he didn't have the phone number with him. And the place he needed to report the sighting to was called the Central Bureau for Astronomical Telegrams. So Bop took it literally and sent a Western Union telegram. And by then, Hell had already emailed the comet's coordinates. This is the very first comet Bop had ever seen. He was an astronomy fan. His father had showed him a meteor shower on the front steps of their home when he was three. He got his first telescope when he was 10, and he joined the Air Force, married, had a daughter, and he took astronomy classes after he got out of the Air Force. And while he was working on a business degree in college, he joined um, astronomy clubs and he met many prominent scientists. So the night he spotted the comet in 1995, he was using his friend's home-built telescope when he noticed a fuzzy glow. He was just hanging out with friends in an astronomy club in Arizona. They tracked it and checked sky charts and made drawings of its location. As the now named comet Hellbop came more visible, his fame allowed him to lecture and appear on TV, such as Bill Nye, the Science Guy show. He was able to quit his job as a manager of a construction materials factory. Bop's father, who first introduced Bop to astronomy when he was three, was able to travel with him and uh, do lectures with him. During the week in 1997, when the comet was most visible, his brother and sister-in-law were out photographing Hale Bopp and were killed in a car accident right after photographing it. The astronomers Carolyn and Jean Shoemaker, who were the co-discoverers of comet Shoemaker-Levy, named an asteroid after Thomas Bopp and his father. And in an odd coincidence, only a couple years later, Carolyn and Jean Shoemaker died in a car crash. The other ominous history of Comet Hale Bop you might remember is that a certain doomsday UFO cult thought that a spaceship was traveling behind Comet Hale Bop 
and committed mass suicide in 1997. You might remember that as Heaven's Gate. So Thomas Bopp was just a regular guy using a borrowed telescope, hanging out with friends from his astronomy club in the Arizona desert looking at the sky. He wasn't an astrophysicist or using an expensive telescope at an observatory. He was just a guy, someone whose father also loved the sky. Astronomy was a hobby, something he did spend considerable time learning about, but a hobby. So Thomas Bopp's Wikipedia page was an embarrassment for years until GSOW got involved. Now thousands can read about him and his co-discovery. Since we rewrote the Wikipedia page in December 2016, it has been viewed 27,345 times. That's not a ton. Most were in the week we launched the page or in the week of his death at the age of 68 when it was announced in January of 2018. We don't write Wikipedia pages because the topic is popular. We're all volunteers. We work on pages that interest us and we write them so that the average person will find them interesting. When the media learned of Thomas Bopp's death, I bet they leaned heavily on his Wikipedia page for writing his obituary. And we're completely fine with that. All the more reason that the Wikipedia page needs to be accurate and complete. What I really love about the Thomas Bopp Wikipedia page story is that possibly thousands of students will be curious and find the page. Maybe even use it as a starting place to write about him or the comet. The following 29 citations we've left for them to find so that they can read more about him. I'm happy thinking that there might be other boys and girls who will be inspired to be curious, to indulge a cool hobby like astronomy, and understand that they don't have to have advanced degrees or an expensive telescope to look up the night sky and say, What's that fuzzy object? If you'd like to become one of my GSOW editors, look me up on Facebook, send me a private message. It's just that easy. If not, stay tuned for more upcoming Susan Gerbic related announcements. And thank you, Skepticality listeners.